is Zach Compton, the recipient of both the NCSE Friend of Darwin Award and the Hugh Hefner First Amendment Award for his efforts in fighting creationist legislation and for serving as an advocate for evolution at the state and national levels. At only 18 years old, he is currently spearheading a campaign to repeal the Louisiana Science Education Act, very ironically named, <laughs> which he has received the support of 78, uh, well, by last count, it may be more now, Nobel laureate scientists, as well as over 70,000 online signatures. Zach has made numerous radio, podcast, and television appearances to further these efforts, including on MSNBC's Hardball and the Melissa Harris Perry Show. He has also appeared before the Louisiana State Legislature, as well as the Louisiana Textbook Advisory Council, where he successfully appealed to prevent the adoption of anti-evolution textbooks in his home state. Please welcome Zach as he shares his endeavors with us and details his ongoing efforts to fight the encroachment of religious fundamentalism in the public school system. Good morning. Thank you all so much for having me here. It's a huge honor to be here with the Humanists of Houston and among so many people who are willing to fight for the separation of church and state. Um, <laughs> separation of church and state is our generation's fight. Um, we need to protect the teaching of evidence-based science. Um, just like the LGBT community has done for the last 40 years fighting for their civil rights, we need to stand up and act out to make sure we're not fighting the Scopes trial 100 years from now. Um, when I first began my campaign to repeal the Louisiana Science Education Act, I didn't really think this would be a freedom of speech battle. Um, I knew this was a crazy, irresponsible law, and I assumed our elected leaders would stand up with me and do the right thing. It was, it was simply like it was a battle on the right thing was simply to repeal it. I didn't grasp as a high school senior how much control the religious right had over our elected leaders. When the Louisiana Science Education Act passed back in 2008, only three out of 144 legislators opposed it. Our, our governor, Bobby Jindal, a Brown University biology major, supported it, signed it, and then since defended it. I've learned that. Tell us what it said. What? Tell us what it said. Um, the Louisiana Science Education Act. I'll get to that in a few minutes. <laughs> um, so I've learned in America that even so-called free speech, that they're really, it's there's a price to it. Um, when I testified before a state senator, I had senators belittling me and the other high school students who came to testify. One of the sitting state senators, uh, Senator Julie Quinn, um, said she was tired of hearing from Nobel laureates with uh, little letters behind their names. Um, and she was amazed we got out of school despite the terrible law. <laughs> and so uh, the Louisiana Creations Group, the Family Forum, gives a gladiator award every year to legislators. Uh, I think Senator Quinn was trying to win the award. Apparently, the way to win is by attacking kids and Nobel laureate scientists. And so the Gladiator Award really fits the bill. It seems to be a second generation award for a second generation mentality. Um, so I've been called the Antichrist and compared to Lenin. Um, I've had organizations uh, send out calls to pray for me to fail. Um, and my favorites, I've been accused of causing Hurricane Katrina. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not terribly sure the logistics on that one since Katrina happened three years before the Louisiana Science Education Act actually passed. <laughs> but, I don't know. Uh, so, opponents of science are going to continue to heap abuse on us, for speak but we need to speak out for good science. It's vital to America's future, and if we don't change the debate about science in the years to come, our students are just, we're not going to get educated. Um, we're not going to be the ones to cure AIDS. We're not going to land on Mars. It's just not going to happen. So the only Republican presidential candidate to defend scientists, John Huntsman, said, one of it, or said once, call me crazy, but I believe in evolution and climate change. Now, he was right. It didn't work from him in the Republican primary. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like, like, my generation needs to be the ones to invent the next iPhone, the next alternative energy source, get us back to the moon, fly us to Mars, cure cancer. And if we don't teach our kids science, none of these things are going to happen. 
and it definitely won't be the kids from the state of Louisiana who do these things. <laughs> um, so my state is addicted to creationism. Um, in 1987, the first creationism law we had, Edwards first, um, was thrown out by the Supreme Court in Edwards versus Aguilard. Um, it allowed creationism to be brought in with equal time, for equal time with evolution, and that was declared unconstitutional. But we're back with another one. The Louisiana Science Education Act, which was signed, supported, and defended by Jindal, um, is another creationism law. We're officially repeat offenders when it comes to creationism. <laughs> um, so I won't lie, the Louisiana Science Education Act is a pretty clever piece of legislation. It never once actually mentions creationism or intelligent design. Instead, in order to dodge court rulings on the issue, like, uh, like Edwards versus Aguilar and the more recent um, Kitz Miller versus Dover, which invalidated intelligent design. Um, and by the way, Kitz Miller versus Dover said intelligent design was creationism, just dressed up in the lab suit to look more scientific, but still equally unconstitutional. Um, so the Louisiana Science Education Act encourages uh, and allows teachers to use supplemental materials to uh, critique evolution and other political controversies. It singles out evolution, age of the earth, or not, origin of the earth, um, climate change, and the most interesting one's cloning, because that's not actually a scientific controversy. I mean, none of these are scientific controversies, but that's not a controversy at all. That we've cloned things, you can argue about the ethics of it, but it still has happened. Like, there's no controversy over whether it's actually happened. So that's sort of a dog whistle that this law is not actually legitimate, it's just critiquing political controversies. And so, these theories are open. Cloning, it, like, 100% of the research is in support of it, and the overwhelming majority of scientists in and out of their own, in and out of the relevant fields are in support of these theories. So, but not Louisiana's legislature or its governor, um, because apparently they know more uh, science than Nobel laureates with little letters behind their names. <laughs> so, throughout the bill and the talking points of the law, there's uh, there are references to critical thinking. Of course, you don't need a law to teach critical thinking in science class. That's the point of science class. Critical thinking is at the heart of the scientific method. You only need a law if you want to sneak unconstitutional and unscientific materials into science class. Um, and that's what the Louisiana Science Education Act does. Now, fortunately, here in Texas, I don't think we'll ever have that problem if the Republican Party has its way. Um, because we won't need to worry about them twisting critical thinking for stealth creationism. They don't even believe in critical thinking. <laughs> As I'm sure many of you are aware, the Texas GOP recently adopted a party platform that said we oppose the teaching of higher order thinking skills, critical thinking, <laughs> and, similar, and similar programs. So maybe that explains why the creationists in Texas haven't been successful with the creationism law, and it uh, explains why their, law, their attempts have been so clunky. Uh, if you want to see creationism, into the classroom by hiding behind critical thinking, you actually have to believe in critical thinking. <laughs> so make no mistake though, the Louisiana Science Education Act is a creationist law. When he first introduced the bill, Senator Ben Nevers let the cat out of the bag, explaining that a creationist group, the Louisiana Family Forum, who I mentioned earlier, asked for the law so creationism could be taught in public school science classrooms. Just right out in the open, it's in the papers. And so, when the Louisiana State Board of Education originally wrote the rules implementing the law, they actually specifically disallowed creationism and evolution in the implementation. The creationists went berserk and had those rules scrapped. So now we don't have any protections anymore from creationism. Um, so despite all their talk about promoting critical thinking, it's crystal clear what the proponents of this law have in mind, teaching creationism. So I got started fighting this insanity in my senior year of high school. Um, I'd always been offended by the Louisiana Science Education Act, and I had always assumed that someone else would get rid of it. Um, and so, after a year went by, no one touched it. Two years, and so I realized it's my last. It was my last year in state. I didn't know where I was going for college at that point. I didn't know if I was going to be there. It was really my last chance to take on the law, and I had a senior project that I had to do for graduation. So I emailed Dr. Barbara Forrest, um, who may, many of y'all may know or may know of. She's, um, a, she was an expert witness at Kitz Miller versus Dover and was responsible for, uh, um, show, like she wrote a book about the Discovery Institute, the creationist group's wedge document that talked about how they were going to sneak creationism into science. And so she's very famous in this field and happened to live 20 minutes away from me. So 
I emailed her and met with her and asked what it would take to repeal this law, and we got started from there. Um, two years later, we've had two bills now, and we're going to have a third soon um, to repeal the Louisiana Science Education Act. We've got 78 Nobel laureate scientists on board, major teacher and, edu uh, teacher and scientist organizations, the city of New Orleans, and many, many others. Um, we stopped the creationists from throwing out science textbooks, which is one of the biggest victories we've had in Louisiana in a decade. Um, at the same time, we actually had a generation of kids showing up with teachers and scientists to fight for good science. But despite our progress, our fight just took a turn for the worse. Um, it seemed like Governor Jindal had done as much damage to science education as he could have, but we were wrong. Our governor just passed a program that takes money from public schools and gives it to private schools that teach creationism. <laughs> in a couple, a couple weeks ago, I documented 20 private schools um, in, in my governor's new voucher program that, uh, that blatantly teach creationism or use creationist curriculums, and they could end up receiving over 1,300 and probably many more voucher slots and over $11 million of public money. They've already received 750 slots and $4 million of public money, according to the Associated Press. And so I found schools that teach our position on the age of the earth and other issues is that any theory that goes against God's word is an error, and they called scientists, I quote, sinful men. Um, <laughs> I found a school that requires in its handbook that students uh, defend creationism through evidence presented by the Bible versus traditional scientific theory. Um, Mother Jones picked out the 14 craziest lessons taught in some of the creationist textbooks. My favorite was the textbook that taught uh, dragons were real. Um, but uh, veering away from creationism for a, bit, for a bit, there's even textbooks that teach the KKK was a moral institution and that uh, God, God used the trail of tears to bring Indians to Christ. Yes. So like, I, I, I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> By the way, one of our state legislators who voted for uh, these vouchers decided to take back her vote once she learned that uh, Muslim schools also qualified for this program. <laughs> um, she thought that religious only meant Christian, and for good reason. Besides all the creationism and dragon, there's even a school that is run by a prophet teaching prophecy that is receiving already $360,000 a year, and the man who runs it calls himself the Apostle. Um, he also has a, is very sketchy finances. Um, <laughs> he has about like 30 something LLCs registered so to, to abandon buildings. Um, so thanks to Governor Jindal, now these schools are being funded by millions of taxpayer dollars. As the New Orleans Times pick you opined, vouchers have turned out to be the answer to the creationist prayer. Um, we're giving public money to private schools that teach to fail our children teaching creationism and we are having children talk creationism in public schools. Um, and all of you, the humanists of Houston, know that this isn't just a Louisiana problem. Um, this looks increasingly like the Republican plan for education in the United States. Um, let's talk about Texas. Our governor, Rick Perry, has proven he doesn't understand evolution by calling it just a theory that's out there and uh, saying it's got one of them that's got some gaps in it. Um, he has said we teach both evolution and creationism here in Texas. Now, for Governor Perry, here's a message. Uh, teaching creationism in public schools is both wrong and illegal. Yes. <laughs> so next up is the Texas State Board of Education. Elections are coming up, and the Texas Freedom Network has identified candidates like Ken Mercer, David Bradley, Marty Rowley, and uh, even the president of the board, uh, Barbara Cargill, as members of a far-right faction that want to throw out evolution, climate science, and other evidence-based science. <clears throat> If we can stand up and prevent the election of some of these radical creationists, then we may be able to protect science education in Texas. We went through the, tech, the textbook fight in Louisiana, and we actually won. But it's even more vital to adopt good science textbooks in Texas, because Texas sets the trend for textbooks across the country. Texas is also refusing to adopt next-generation science standards. Barbara Cargill, the president of the board, said there is a 0% chance of adopting the standards that have been created by some of the best scientists and educators around the country. So I explained the insanity of vouchers in Louisiana. We're also going to probably have them here. Um, I don't trust Governor Perry not to copy Governor Jindal's awful example on the vouchers. And so please join me. I'm going to be in Austin, Texas next Friday for the uh, – there's a Senate Education Committee meeting to 
to talk about vouchers before the legislature convenes next year. And I'm going to be there to explain why, um, in light of what Governor Jindal has done, vouchers are a very bad idea. So I also expect to be back in Austin in the spring when the legislature is in session because, as usual, I expect there will be another attempt at a creationism bill that we need to shoot down. So we can't just blame Louisiana and Texas for the creationism laws, though. Tennessee, pa Tennessee actually passed its own copycat creationism law this spring. Um, so that makes Louisiana not the only state anymore. Now we have a friend, Tennessee. Um, but laws have been introduced all over the country. Missouri, Florida, and New Hampshire, so the northerners can also stop smirking because this is, their, <laughs> this is also their problem. Um, <laughs> so Oklahoma, Maryland, South Carolina, Michigan, Iowa, Alabama, and more. Um, creationism has become a plank of the Republican Party platform, it seems like. Look at the Republican presidential candidates. Um, Rick Santorum, Michelle Bachman, even Ron Paul is a creationist. Newt Gingrich reversed his former support of evolution for creationism this time around. Um, Tim Pawlenty was a creationist. Paul Ryan hasn't been on record about creationism, but he's definitely a climate change denier, and he's gladly all over the record on that. Um, my governor, Bobby Jindal, was Romney's point man on education. He, Romney put him on national TV to roll out his own education plan, which was he said, which they said was closely in line with Jindal's. So, like, even if Romney hasn't explicitly talked about creationism in 2012, he, by embracing Bobby Jindal, even if you're not a creationist, you're essentially promoting creationism. Um, and so, and Jindal isn't, he's, Jindal by himself is gonna run for president in 2016 if Romney doesn't win now. So, this, it seems, it feels like this is the Republican Party platform now. Um, so we need to demand the national media stop sitting on the sideline and ignoring creationism laws just because they're like a Louisiana problem or a Texas problem. Because they're not. 46% of America, according to the last Gallup poll, is a young earth creationist. Now, New Hampshire had a creationism bill. As I said, this is not just a southern problem. Um, Tennessee passed its own. And then another scary thing is North Carolina tried to outlaw climate science. They actually were trying to not allow people to use um, the future position of the oceans when they're building things because they didn't like the science of it. That, like, that, that just doesn't work. Um, and so this science, climate, or science denial is not a southern problem, it's not a Louisiana problem, it's an American problem. And so as a student at Rice, where, it's, where nearly 50 years ago, JFK declared, we choose to go to the moon this decade and do other things, not because they're easy, but because they're hard, and because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills, because that challenge is one we are unwilling to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone. We can't postpone a good science education for our students. Fighting back against the backwards forces of science denial will not be easy. No, it's going to be a very long, hard fight. The creationists are well-financed and determined. In Louisiana, the Family Forum, our local creationist group, intimidates politicians into voting against science. Nationally, the Discovery Institute, a very well-financed think tank based in Seattle, has been drafting and sneaking anti-science legislation into classrooms across the country for years. This fight will be hard, but it's one we must have. Otherwise, we won't be going to Mars, and we definitely won't be living up to JFK's, re-fulfilling JFK's challenge that took us to Mars. It's vital we stand up and speak out for science. The humanists of Houston know this, and it's our duty to inspire the rest of the country to do the same. We need people to stand up with us. Politicians, business leaders, celebrities, scientists. We need to call out Mitt Romney for making a cowardly creationist like Governor Jindal his education policy guru. We need to call him out for considering Jindal as one of his shortlist VP candidates. We need to call out politicians like Michelle Bachman who have said that Nobel laureates support creationism. Um, and obviously there are none. Like, <laughs> we have 78 on our side now, she has zero. Um, so the debate about science needs to change. We need to be funding science rather than slashing funding. We need to be teaching evolution, not creationism. Teaching radiocarbon dating, not Noah's flood teaching climate science, not just plain denial science. And so we're the ones who need to speak out and make this change. And please join our fight. Thank you all so much for having me here. It's a huge honor. And if anyone has any questions, I'd love to answer them. Uh, you mentioned that uh, we're having an election mm -hmm. uh, on that school board. Mm -hmm. Roxy, can we not get a list of people, you know, that 
do uh, one thing or another thing? Are they giving a site so I can go there so I can well, make an informed vote? Um, Texas Freedom Network. Texas Freedom yeah, Texas Freedom Network has that. We can put a link well, there. Well, okay, uh, yeah, put a link there so that I can go there because waving through our ballot is, you know, yeah. it's a yeah. major yeah. effort. They have a lot of research on and that. that yeah. was Because I wondered about that. Yes. And when you mentioned it, I said, yeah, if I could yeah, find it. The Texas Freedom Network is so. Okay, so we got a link that we can get info there. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. The primaries are over. Mm -hmm. And it's in the primaries that we determine who is going to be on the State mm -hmm. Board of Education. Yeah. It's over. Barbara Cargill mm -hmm. is uh, from my district, mm -hmm. from my region. <laughs> she lives in the woodlands. And the person she followed was of the same ilk. Um, there is enough power in the woodlands to uh, see that these are the only people who get elected during the primaries. Uh, since the state uh, votes are, no matter who's running, the way it used to vote D, no matter who was running, once upon a time, we have a very lazy electorate. We have to make an argument that is more convincing than voting for whatever your minister says or your priest says. We have to, uh, the, the rational argument doesn't wash. But as, this, as Mr. Wright said, <laughs> Money it, it does a lot. We need to make the argument that our children without a decent science education are not, and without good critical thinking skills, are not going to be well educated. Uh, I don't know whether you observe this the way I do, but I will express how I see the education problem is. There are a lot of people who do not want public education to teach critical thinking or good science because that takes away from their children dominating the higher education uh, moneyed profession. They don't want challenges from lower economic groups. They don't want you to think. They don't want you to criticize. They just want you to uh, take your $5 and vote for the off. Um, we, I think that's one a challenge that humanists have to present a money based, a capitalist based argument that we are damaging our children's future when we do not give them critical thinking, scientific method, and textbooks that promote that. Actually, I have two thoughts on that, which are the first one is um, the voucher schools, I mentioned they were using creationist textbooks. These textbooks actually, the UC system went to court to have the ability to uh, s say they weren't actually valid materials. And so that, that's something that people should, or the legislature should remember when they pass these laws, is if you're having these textbooks, there are some schools who are going to say, we don't believe you have a real science education. And they've gone to court to have the right to say that. So that's the first thing. And the second is the other argument, the economic argument is, we can't, like, we can't do, like, people are going to get sick and die, and healthcare costs are very expensive if we don't have good medicine. We can't go out of our space, explore, find new markets in our Like, we can't do anything. Science is, ha science, we get, I think it was like an eight times return on our investment when we invest in science. 
that, that's the real economic argument. Science gives us so much, and it's our future, and if we just suddenly throw it by the wayside for petty political concerns at the moment, it's going to destroy our country. Excellent. Uh, many, eight years ago, in 1933, I brought yeah. Darwin the Archer of Species to my science class in eighth grade here at Junior, Junior, Junior High School. And Mrs. Black said, Lewis, your ancestors may have brought the monkey for mine, didn't <laughs> And uh, a few years later, when I was in college, I revisited my teacher there. I love the school and the teacher. Reminded her of it. She said, You know, we have to be very careful what we say. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're afraid of uh, teachers in those days, you know, were afraid of evolution was almost a dirty word. Yeah. And uh, so, your, your employment might be a risk if you, if you spoke out in favor of it. And things haven't changed very much now. And, and the, the, the cause of it, of, of this opposition, is religious superstition. It's religion. And so that's why I'm a humanist. Are you a humanist too? Um, at this point, like, I probably shouldn't speak on that specifically. I mean, I, I like the humanist philosophy. I like doing good for all people. Um, and like, I just, a high school senior, I don't know, or not, a college sophomore, I don't know enough about religion to speak on it at all. Um, You're a functional humanist. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll say on that, you mentioned something that bothers me greatly, though, um, like, which is, we have the exact same problem today, which teachers are still very afraid of talking about something as fundamental as evolution. Like, in, in like, another Gallup poll recently, I forget the exact stats, I think it was 60% of biology teachers didn't, said they didn't teach evolution fully, mm -hmm. which is just, like, that's another factor of these laws. It's a huge, huge intimidation factor mm -hmm. for, uh, for, um, like, just, you, like, you, you have state endorsement of creationism, and suddenly you're going to come out and say, there, there's, some, there's something in the back of your head that says when you're teaching evolution, the government says creationism, and you're not going to teach it fully then. So that's a huge, huge problem. Mm -hmm. okay. I have a question, not on the topic, but... Uh, is, is that a microphone? <laughs> so um, that maybe we could hear better? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Actually, no, no, it's, no, no, it's, it's not just for me. Okay. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Speak up. Okay. okay. Um. Um, so as a product of public mm -hmm. education of Texas and <laughs> as a current high school science teacher, one, thank you, sweetie. It's, <laughs> it's so good to see a teenager with some critical thinking skills. Um, well, I'm... Did you have to call him Sweetie? <laughs> 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 um, anyway, uh, I was just wondering, since Texas and California are the big textbook buyers and kind of the rest of the country follows whatever textbooks <laughs> California and Texas picks out, have you and Dr. Forrest been working with any uh, Californian groups at all to kind of help go at it from that angle? Um, we haven't worked in the specific way you mentioned, but I, I work a lot with actually California groups like the National Center for Science Education on this. Um, th I've, I've worked very closely with them over the years now. And I don't, I feel like, I, I don't know sp the specifics of textbook publishing, but I think most of the California publishers are going to be very, very good in evolution. I just, because maybe from what I've seen there, California, California is very strongly in support of evolution. That's where, that's where a ton of my support is coming from. So I, I don't know the specifics, but I think that they're probably working on that. What is, it, what is the law right now as far as teaching ever, uh, creationism in Texas? Um, it's tech, right now, there's no law about it. I mean, so the bigger issue is the State Board of Education with creationism right now. They always try and pass a law, but they haven't succeeded yet. Um, last, last legislative session, I think they had a pretty clunky law that, like, I, I, I don't remember the exact language in the law, but I, th and I, I don't quote me on this, but I think they call for intelligent design or creationism to openly be taught in Texas, and that, that's just not going to pass constitutional muster at all. <coughs> they, can't, they can't disguise that one at all. Louisiana's is very, very clever because instead of blatantly pushing it in the door, it just opens the door for it to come in. But Texas, they did it in a more clunky way. Um, but I guess that comes from not wanting to use critical thinking to... Yeah. 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 We're not right now. He, he, he's not. 
Well, I mean, he, he doesn't act. He, he's that just was, governor. He's just, yeah, it's, it's, I, I would, I, but I take what he says with a grain of salt on that one just because it, if, we, if that was happening, I'd hope someone comes out and says it and then the state could be sued because it's unconstitutional. <coughs> now, I, I don't know the specifics. Like, it's hard to find a specific school, find a student or a teacher will stand up. The example I give, I'm sure many of you know um, who Damon Fowler is. He's living in Texas now. Um, but he, this, this is the example I give when everyone asks why there's no lawsuit. And so he spoke out against school prayer and found himself thrown out of his house, um, chased out of town. He needed police protection at his graduation. And so that's sort of what's going to happen if anyone stands up against the Louisiana Science Education Act like, and sues the law. Many people, or at least people are afraid of that. And so it's probably similar in Texas to try and find someone who's going to be able to give you a specific on it. It's just, it's just there's a huge intimidation factor. But, and so having said that, there's probably schools that unconstitutionally teach creationism. It's not state mandated from the legislature at least, although I'm sure they'd love to do it. Um, but the, S the State Board of Education, I know, has put various weasel words in that would sometimes allow it. Um, I'm not sure the exact specific of the curriculum stands right now because they've been back and forth. Um, but there, there's been attempts to put creationism in at least. Um, the wording of that, platform in the Texas Republican Party is here in the part that talks about parents' rights and yes. parents' in the feelings. Um, I have a, a, a child who's written a book called Raised in Captivity, How America <laughs> Trains Its Children. And it probably helped me pick up on it. But is there an approach to this whole thing that doesn't confront organized religion, <clears throat> but takes the angle of children's rights. It will be a long time before it really just indoctrination is considered abuse, but there might be some way in which this whole question could be discussed, not only depriving children of scientific education, but in a funny way uh, of abusing them, uh, restricting them, which they, do have, they don't have much rights, but if they're the next group to have them, well, I'm sure. What about that? <laughs> I mean, I'm not a legal expert. So I, don't, I don't know the specific on like what qualifies. I don't know the specific on legal rights for children. But I mean, I think it's sort of already like put out in that way anyway, which is our children should be taught. Like it was doing them a huge disservice not to give them a science education. It's doing our country a huge disservice not to give our children a science education. And so th that's a very effective argument, at least. It, at least it makes legislators think um, when you raise that point. Is it, is it accurate to say that in fact there are two battlegrounds? One is the courts, mm -hmm. and one is actually, I mean, these legislators are not coming out of nowhere. And there is a population that believes in angels and all that. And that battleground has not been, it's totally ceded to them. Is there something that people are doing to um, fight on that battleground? in addition to the court fight? I mean, that, I don't think you can fight on the specific one you mentioned. The other one I'd give you instead is the legislature, which is you can always go, and if there's a bill, you can go get your friends, send out a call, and get as many people as you can to go into committee or go into the legislature and tell them, don't vote for this, this is wrong. You can explain to them why it's wrong, give them all the research, and get as many people. Like this is, The simple way it works is just getting what the reason they make the the most important thing is their votes. And so if you show them votes are against teaching creationism, then they're gonna vote for science. But if the votes are for teaching creationism, they're gonna vote for that. So it's more about mobilizing than um, sort of trying, try, it, it's gonna be easier to mobilize and get a lot of people to tell the legislature to vote for science than it is to be to fight with people over the science. Um, <laughs> Have they ever considered uh, uh, not only the issue of uh, freedom of speech, but the issue of freedom of religion? And um, a lot of the battles that I think you're fighting right now, you're, you're pitting uh, Christ, the Christi, Judeo-Christian religion versus science and reason. Okay? But from my perspective, I'm a religious philosopher, I'm a religious human. You also have the issue of Judeo-Christian religion and all the other religions of the world. So there's Hinduism, there's Buddhism, there's also the, the, the Sikhs, there, you know, you know, there are many other religions in the world besides the Baha'i. Okay? So there's, 
there's a lot of different religions in the world besides just Judeo-Christian religions, okay? And one art, one way that you might be able to approach it is, 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 is assuming that this is infringing on the rights of Hindus and infringing on the rights of Sikhs and infringing on the rights of Jains and Buddhists and all these other religions, mm -hmm. because they have equal rights to have their religious beliefs, which have nothing to do with uh, Genesis. And that's right? absolutely right. Yeah, I mean, it's one of the, one of the things that actually got discussed. So, so, so in that particular case, you would go and say, we want to take the, the case to the Supreme Court, because this is an issue of freedom of religions, not an issue between science and reason on one side, and religion on the other side. No, a, a fight between the Hindus and the Buddhists against the Christians and the Jews and the Muslims on the other side. Um, so, yeah. so it would then become an issue of, of religions fighting religions. <laughs> Holy wars. <laughs> okay, and I have a lot of friends with the Hindus and the Buddhists. And if you want to, I can, you know, try to raise up a few hundred million people to <laughs> help out with this. On the court case, it's harder. Just, like, for the Louisiana Science Education Act, it's just, because, I mean, because while the court case would be really nice, it actually may be easier for us to go legislatively just because of the way it's written. Because it's written very, very cleverly. I mean, we know they're using it. They've come out, school boards have like openly discussed putting creationism in the curriculum. But we need, we need everything to work out exactly right. And that's, and it's easier for us. I mean, we'll have a bill next year. If we don't succeed next year, we'll have a bill after that. And we'll have a bill and we'll have a bill and we'll keep doing it. And you know, eventually we will win. Like, that, that, that's, we know that without a doubt. The Louisiana Science Education Act is going to be repealed. Yeah, it may take us time. No, I, and I understand. Mm -hmm. I mean, what you're talking about are tactics and, mm -hmm. and winning battles, okay? But what I'm talking about is winning the war completely forever, okay? And, and it's not a battle. It's winning it completely forever. And in this particular case, you would say, okay, Hindus and Buddhists have rights in this country, too, okay? And, and it's a valid argument. It's an argument not only a freedom of religion, it's an argument of freedom of thought, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and freedom of the press, okay? All of it. It's all in the Constitution. This country was founded by Deus, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, Thomas Paine, the uh, founding father of the Unitarian Christians. I'm a Unitarian Christian myself, okay? Unitarian Christians are rationalists. They believe in science and reason. When they read scripture, they cut out all the superstition, okay? All right, they look for the wisdom in the, in the Bible. Anything, anything that's like, okay, this goes against science and, and reason, it's cut out. Like Thomas Jefferson cut it out from the Bible and the Jefferson Bible. Okay, okay. okay. Is, is there, this traditional of yours had his hand up a long time ago. <laughs> While I uh, certainly admire your dedication, I do not share your concern for the consequences of failure in your task. Mm -hmm. I was raised very strictly through creationism. Mm -hmm. I also was taught to believe in Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I bought into both. But later on, as life goes on and we get other information, you have to start making up your own mind. Mm -hmm. Now these scientists who developed the iPad who studied electromagnetic charges. Does it really matter whether they think that those charges were created by some god or came from a big band? It doesn't matter at all. If I'm an astronomer studying gamma rays, does it matter whether they, I believe that Jesus sent them to Earth or they came <laughs> to some law of physics? So I think that the consequences of teaching creationism are really not as nefarious as we've discussed here, because I guarantee you that probably, and I'm just not a vague man, but if I were a vague man, I'd bet you that half the scientists who were involved in, in Mr. Jacob's uh, research for the iPad, half of them died. Mm -hmm. Probably. And yet still, they were able to, as scientists, achieve what they achieved. But there's also a big difference between, I mean, the, 
you like there it doesn't matter what anyone believes. Like that's everyone's personal right to believe whatever they want. But there's a, there's a difference between wasting time and conf because you, you if you teach creationism in a science class, you're going to confuse students about the scientific method because creationism doesn't follow the scientific method. Um, and first first waste of time, then you're confusing students. And so there's a potential scientist in Louisiana who's going to be taught creationism who who doesn't who suddenly gets very confused about how how uh, some, what falsifiability is. It wastes his time. He won't be prepared for college. And suddenly, there he may be the one who discovers some who makes the next amazing discovery. But suddenly, he's behind in college. Suddenly, he decides he doesn't like science because he's been taught wrong and been confused about it. And then he doesn't make that discovery. And that can repeat over and over in every classroom where they teach it. And so, while there's some people who may come through this, I'm sure there are a lot of creationists who can still make this, like people who believe in creationism who make great discoveries. There's no doubt about that. But there's also people who, because they're confused with miseducation through these laws that are being taught in public schools, they just won't have, they, it will change their life and they won't be able to make that discovery. And it's not through any fault of their own, it's through the fault of public officials who put the wrong things in the classroom. And it's the first step to a mm -hmm. lack of access. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's, okay, so we're not going to teach evolution in school? Well, okay, well, gravity is just a theory, too. We don't need to teach that either. Yeah. And so it's just cool. I think it's very important that creation means, means from the Bible that it is literally true. And literally true means a whole lot of political positions that are pushed simply based on that. So to me, it goes way beyond science. Yeah, there's another question that comes up, and we've already kind of addressed this. Uh, when you put a pattern in, it's much harder to unlearn it than it is to learn it in the first place. That's the natural advantage for that in education. I think she would go along. The other thing is, I think somebody mentioned, maybe you, 46% of the people uh, go creationists. That leaves uh, 50, eh? 50 percent that don't. And so then the question is, uh, probably a big block of that, our uh, uh, Judeo-Christian tradition, mm -hmm. yes. have you made contact with you know the the, uh, the Reformed Jew, the Presbyterian, mm -hmm. uh, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Have you made contact yeah. with them to try to enlist their political support yeah. to Often they slug have. it out? Um, like right now, for example, um, a very close friend of mine who works close, like who works on this issue. He is another of the Kitz Miller uh, veterans, um, Ken Miller, who some of y'all may know the name. Um, He's, a Brown, he's also a Brown University biologist. Um, he actually made sure Jindal wasn't in any of his classes after the law passed. <laughs> um, and so, uh, he, but he, uh, he, he writes widely on his Catholicism and evolution. And um, for example, we've also had the endorsement of the Clergy Letter Project. It's, I think, maybe 14,000 clergy members now who've in, endorsed evolution. Um, and so there's actually a wide, there's a, a large number. I mean, most, a lot of, the majority of the support for evolution is from religious people. Um, there's a lot of people who've managed to um, bring the two together. Now, um, the, a big problem we have actually is intelligent design because it's, it's, a, very, it's a very clever way to name it. It's, it. Intelligent design sounds great. It sounds like a lot of people think intelligent design, like if you talk to someone who doesn't know anything about the issue, They'll say intelligent design means that God created evolution, which is just patently untrue. That's, that, that's what it would sound like if you just think about the name. If you have no background on the issue, it makes perfect sense. That's not actually what intelligent design means. Intelligent design is creationism, and they just renamed it, basically. It's the exact same thing. But in Kitzmiller, they actually they took all the creationist textbooks after creationism was, out, was declared unconstitutional and literally control F creation and put in design. So that they actually document that in court. Um, so that, that's essentially what it is. But when you hear that, so a lot of people will say, I support intelligent design because they feel like it's a very reasonable um, issue just from the name. But it's actually not. It's still creationism. And so what these people are, instead of intelligent design theorists, they're actually theistic evolutionists is what the proper name is. But most people don't know that. And so it gives a lot of false support to creationism because of how cleverly the creationists designed their name. And so that's, that's unfortunate and people need to be educated no, you're not actually an intelligent science supporter. You're actually a theistic evolution. That's what you just espoused. 
and that's a perfect position to have. Like, the, that you'll teach the right thing in schools, and it's great. But intelligent design is not what we want to teach. Zach, can you talk for a minute about <laughs> the negative economic impact on the state of Louisiana? As an educator here in Texas and a Louisiana native, this is a very uh, important you know topic that you're covering. That's why I want to come listen to you. Um, but I did read about how you know it's a huge PR battle in Louisiana to the rest of the country with this new act. Yeah. And also, you have national science organizations that are canceling conventions in the state. So you have to pose that economic argument. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about that? making that. Um, so the funny example I usually give is if you uh, search on monster jobs, creation and creation or creationism, you get uh, zero jobs. <laughs> so when you search, when you search on biology, um, you get thousands, obviously. And so the, what actually, the, you made the point about the science convention. Now, there's science conventions boycotting Louisiana. One of them, the uh, Society for Integrative and Comparative Biology, they, uh, they had a convention scheduled in New Orleans. New Orleans is a great place for conventions. It's a lot of fun. Um, I actually, um, so they, as soon as the law passed, they pulled out and moved to Salt Lake City because Salt Lake City, yeah, it's <laughs> not as fun as New Orleans. <laughs> but Salt Lake City, uh, because Salt Lake City passed good science standards. And so they moved to Salt Lake City. Um, the president actually emailed me and was like, when can we come back to New Orleans? When are you going to get this done? Because he wants to come back. But they won't come back as long as we have anti-science laws. And so there's that. And there's also, last time, when we were in the Senate Education Committee this year for our bill, we had the LSU Graduate Dean of Sciences come and testify for us. And he talked about how he lost a researcher, one of his top researchers, because specifically because of this law. who did, They just didn't want to be in Louisiana, an anti-science state. And he also had two others who had been thinking about coming and working at LSU, who had left and decided to go elsewhere because Louisiana has a reputation as being anti-science. So there, there's a real economic impact that we can see, and, hope, and the legislature's been ignoring it thus far. Zach, mm -hmm. perhaps there's an even larger issue here, one of censorship. Mm -hmm. I'd say there is, probably. Um, Yep. And I wonder if there's an angle there that you might be able to approach. Because mm -hmm. this country is really down on censorship. Mm -hmm. I mean, the freedom of speech issue is a good one, I think. Yeah, yeah I know. Okay. But specifically censorship, to censor a, a, mm -hmm. uh, an avenue of learning mm -hmm. in, in regards to an avenue of, well, magic. Mm -hmm. Or is that happening? <laughs> mm -hmm. no, I mean, th there is, I mean, the... There, there is a lot to be said for freedom of speech angle on this because there's, I mean, it, it's an aggressive campaign to um, not let our students learn, and then there's also an aggressive campaign to shut down anyone who wants our students to learn. For example, Dr. Forrest, um, when we went into the uh, uh, Board of Education meeting for textbooks in Louisiana, that morning the Family Forum had printed her CV in the paper and was, like, I mean, Ripping her to pieces over it. The irony, of course, is her CV is very impressive. So, so you ripped the, it up. So there's comments on the article that go that were like it was published by the head of the Family Forum, uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Gene Mills, mm -hmm. and there's comments in the article going, "This woman looks like she has a lot more credibility than you, Mr. Mills," <laughs> because <laughs> because it, it is a very impressive CV. <laughs> so there's that, but it's, there's a very aggressive campaign to limit people's freedom of speech over this. I still don't know if he brought up a good point, but I, I think. Uh, the creationism is not an isolated part of conservatism. It's part of the package. It's part of a mindset. A patriarchal, dogmatic, anti-woman way of viewing the world. And if, if we could maybe take that out, maybe some of the other pillars would, would start weakening and crumbling. But that, that, that's a key point in the philosophy, but mm -hmm. it, it, it builds up. It's just part of a big package of a mindset. Mm -hmm. And I think a, a good thing is to try to pull that thing out and see what else follows. I mean, the one thing though is, just like we say we don't want them to, uh, like we, we want the ability to understand evolution, we can't actually force anyone to believe anything they don't like. We may not like what they believe, but it's their right. We'll, but what we can, we can put our foot down, is they don't have any right to put it in government. That, that, that's where we can take this issue. Is they, they, anyone can believe what they want, but when it comes to the public sphere, that's where it stops. Because you have you have your ability to believe in creationism, but you don't have the ability to teach my kid creationism. And that that's the important point to make there. They answer back that you don't have a right to teach to undermine my teaching. 
That's the parents' rights side of that. Mm -hmm. Except they're wrong. <laughs> like, that, that's the one good thing we have Zach, on the side is they're wrong. <laughs> Zach is a group. High mm -hmm. school students now have a lot of power. How are you exercising that power? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean speaking out. The problem is high school students don't realize they have power. How are you, how are you addressing that? Um, I mean hopefully I'm showing I know by, what you're doing personally. Hopefully right? leading by example is a big one. And I've Good. been, I mean it's hard, but I've realized it's hard to, tr for example, teach high school students in Louisiana how to do these things when I'm out of state. And so that was something I struggled with last year. But we did have high school, we had I think probably four high school students testify this year with us. Um, we had even more the year before while I was in state. Um, and we, we have high school students who are stepping out and addressing this, talking about this, and we'll have even more next year. You're an impressive person. Yeah. You, uh, um, <laughs> you mentioned, as we're going along, some people, uh, the Looney Tune fanatics, <laughs> have threatened physical violence. <laughs> Have you been threatened um, with physical violence? I've never ever actually been threatened. There's been statements that are very uh, threatening, but I've never been specifically threatened. Um, and it's mostly, I don't really put much credence in either because it's mostly just stuff on the internet from people I don't know. Like, I can't, it gets more worrisome when, for example, someone finds my personal Facebook and sends me a message. But I've never been sent a threat. Like, someone found my Facebook and sent that I must be the Antichrist. To my Facebook. And I was just like, I, 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 I was, I, it's like not worth responding to in general. If I get a physical, if I ever get a real physical threat, I'm going to send it to the FBI and let them deal with it. But I haven't gotten it yet. Yeah, if we could just um, at least allow everyone to ask questions who hasn't had an yeah. yet. Another yeah. back yeah, uh, the law was passed by the legislature, which is dominated by rural Louisiana. Right? Mm -hmm. You add up the um, numbers, and rural Louisiana, not in population, but yeah. in votes in the legislature, yeah. controls it. Do you have any support in rural Louisiana? I mean, there's a little. I mean, the largest block of support I have comes. I, maybe, I don't. I don't know because I'm, this is sort of. If you know Louisiana politics, it comes from New Orleans, um, and so. That, that's where most of my support has come from thus far. That's where the Antichrist comes from. <laughs> yes. that, was all, that was also hurricane, the cause of Hurricane yeah. Katrina before I was, so um, we're natural allies there. But, um, but so far, I mean, I'd obviously like to get it, and I hope we'll get some. There, there, I mean, there are, and that's not, that's not to say that all people from rural Louisiana are opposed to, or are in favor of teaching creations, we're not. Like, it's just, you're probably right that there's going to be more from the cities than from the rural areas. But, we, I mean, we want, obviously want all their votes, and we're going to need their votes in the end. So what support do you get from the mass university? Are you glad to be there? Are mm -hmm. you organizing the professors and your students? <laughs> it's a good the school. people in the medical center, <laughs> all the colleges around there, who are so interested in science, the National Institutes of Health. Are they mm -hmm. all getting involved with you? I'm hoping. I mean, Rice, obviously, I, I, don't, I think probably you all know, has a reputation for being sort of apolitical. And so I'm hoping to bring it out of that slump a little bit because I, I'd like it to be, i like to actually care about these things, especially because Rice students often go overwhelmingly to the sciences and engineering. And so the issue I didn't touch on as much today, but it's a very important issue, which is science funding. Um, they, like this is, I mean, their future jobs depend on making sure that we actually value science. And so it's something that they should care about and I'm hoping to show them this while I'm there. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about uh, power and money, and uh, in Texas and Louisiana as well, the most powerful and wealthiest institution is the oil and gas industry. So if you go down to Galveston, there's a oil and gas museum there, and there's a, you can get a pamphlet that mm -hmm. says, like, here are the strata, and here are the, you know, the 20 million year old trilobites and whatever, and it seems like you can't, you know, you can't search for oil if you don't understand science. So I think it's useful. Yeah. If, um, all it would take is one or two CEOs of a major oil and gas company to speak out against this, and uh, you know they're also the most po powerful contributors to the Republican Party. So you know that seems like a the most bang for your buck by getting someone. I, why don't I think I, I may speculate on where the because I, I agree they the oil and gas companies absolutely under, like you can't be an oil engineer. Petroleum, I guess the title is Petroleum Engineer, yeah. if you don't understand evolution. Um, like that, 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 but the thing is, there's all, I'm going to speculate that there's also tax breaks that come for them, 
um, is one thing. And so the thing is they can keep their tax breaks and just not hire Louisiana students. <laughs> or like, for example, they'll hire people from Rice to come over to Louisiana and do our stuff. Um, and now that's really unfortunate for us in Louisiana, but it works out for them. And so I, I would hope, I'd hope some of them got them have some courage and step out and say that we need to teach evolution and that's the right thing and that will help our economy. Um, and so I, I'd love for them to do that, and if they do it, I'd be overjoyed. That's what I'll say on that. <laughs> this law in Louisiana, it states that, if a, that you can debate the merits of evolution or climate change. Is that correct? That's, that's what um, the law it's critiquing that. Critiquing, yeah. right. My question is, where does the tr critique come from? Is the teacher allowed to do it, or do they have materials that are provided Supple for them? It's supplemental materials that the teacher brings in. That, and okay. the way it works is they don't have to be pre-approved. They only can be contested, and it's, it's pretty tough to contest them. And so it, you, it's- could, could not somebody sue and say, hey, these materials are coming from creationists? Yeah, is it we, someone could, and we would like yeah. that to happen, but then, I mentioned earlier, there's the sort of intimidation factor, which is, it's very scary. If you're coming from a place in Louisiana, for example, Livingston Parish, which has discussed teaching creationism, they're not going to take very kindly to you suing one of their favorite laws now. And, that, the, and, peop, and kids know that, families know that, kids whose parents might be creationists and like the creationists being taught know that, and that's a very scary thing to suddenly say, I'm going to, I'm going to call the ACL, ACLU and get a court case. I mean, first. First, you actually even have to know how we call the Americans United or ACLU to ask for a lawyer. That's the first step, and often people don't even know that. People don't even know that they're not supposed to be taught this. Um, so you've got to get that past that, and then you've got to have them brave enough to, uh, to come out and actually take a stand against the law, and that's actually a very high bar. So that, that's the problem right there is, I mean, it would be great, and eventually, eventually there may be someone who does that and comes out and takes a stand against the law legally, but I'm not in school now. I don't have standing. I went to a magnet school. Luckily, we're actually taught evolution. And so I'm not the person to sue, at least at this point. It just seems really easy. If somebody walks in with something from the Discovery Institute, it's game over. I mean, yeah. <laughs> this is clearly, this yeah, is clearly. It's, it's after, it's, yeah, yeah that, that's the problem. Is it's like, that will, that will be, it'll be great once we have the people stand up. But before people stand up and sue, you've got, you just have, that has to happen. And so until then, I mean, we'll still work, even if someone has a legal case, we'll still try and repeal the law, and maybe they'll be faster, maybe we'll be faster. But either way, it's the right thing to repeal it or to sue it and just get rid of it. What is your major? Um, I'm a history major right now. Um, history. I, I'd like to, uh, to briefly make two things. Uh, number one, the Texas State Board of Education. Four years ago, there was a national election. Uh, our current president carried an awful lot of people on his coattails. In Harris County, okay, now we're here. Harris County, every judgeship, or nearly so, went on the president's coattails, and there was a massive changeover from practically every judge being a Democrat, you know, and that changed over almost 100%. Now, mm -hmm. it so happens, I noticed to my dismay at that time, that the religious right candidates for the Board of Education ran unopposed. That's right. So they're still there. Uh, a new batch coming in. But by the time the next election rolls around, where some of these Board of Education people are going to come up, uh, somebody needs to oppose these people. Somebody who, who has a functioning brain in their head. <laughs> well, why didn't you run? <laughs> I won't enter into that now. <laughs> but I'm hoping somebody else can do it. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to bring up, was, uh, you know, in the realm of medicine, Texas is hurting. Uh, there are not enough physicians being trained. Most of the ones that are being trained are proceeding to go someplace else for their specialty training and they tend to stay there. So Texas is hurting and will be hurting even more. Now, why do I bring that up? Because at the same time that the uh, State Board of Education and the Republican Party have said, you know, no, no to critical thinking. Uh, as of a few weeks ago, uh, an outfit, I forget the name of them, the people who write 
the medical college admissions test, the yes. test that every yes. pre-med takes, you know, to try to get into medical school. They announced that they're going to put previously unexistent massive emphasis on critical thinking. Now, I got a sneaky suspicion that Texas pre-meds ain't going to do as well as they should be doing. So it's going to hurt the future of medicine in Texas that much more. Yeah. And also it hurts because we have the largest med center in the world right across the street from me. So mm -hmm. yeah. it's pretty important for us. What, what is the connection between the climate change and the evolution? And don't they realize that climate change could lead to the extinction of humanity? I mean, they don't seem to. It's very, very scary. There's, I mean, there is a huge overlap between climate change deniers and evolution deniers. And, um, Climate change is something I'm looking to get more into, um, and sort of in conjunction as the NCSC is also open to front on climate change now, and so that that's something that it's something that's very important and needs to be addressed because climate, whether we like it or not, climate change is happening, and so we can bury our heads in the sand and then, or we can accept it and do what we can to change it, and so just teaching denials, I mean but, teaching but denials to the generation. And the creation of minds that that they connect evolution with climate change? Is it just because they're young earth creationists? And I mean, God can't destroy, God will be the one to destroy the world. Man cannot the, destroy the world. I That's think a lot of climate change also is the sure. economic argument. That too. is amply discussed and very well in a book that I would suggest uh, you might become acquainted with, um, uh, Merchants of Doubt. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, the uh, author, Oreskes, was uh, at Rice a few months ago. <coughs> Merchants of Doubt. And it goes back to the early days of uh, tobacco and cancer. Mm -hmm. The same people who become, they become experts at saying, let's see if we can uh, instill doubt and therefore keep the, uh, you know, the, keep it going the way it is, you know. Uh, and the, the same people uh, have uh, gotten into the creation thing, they've gotten their arguments into the climate thing and so forth and so on. It's, it's, it's a cottage industry that they've developed. Merchants of Doubt by Oresis. There's a question over the corner. Someone in the back or me? Or I, think. <laughs> I just wanted to ask, uh, you mentioned you know, following the Texas legislature and testifying where appropriate. Mm -hmm. Are there any Texas groups you're working with? Um, the Texas Freedom Network. Okay. They're a great group. Um, their website has a lot of information mm -hmm. on this stuff. Um, so that, that's who I've been talking to recently about where to go in Texas politics. I have a question about creationism theory. Do they, are they locked into 6,000 year old Earth and they have different types of creationist oh. time scales? I, I, I'll, there's a couple different sort of types of creationism. And so the first is sort of young Earth creationism. And that, that was the original, that was Scope's trial. Okay. Um, and that's, that's sort of the standard 6,000 years old um, creationism. And while I'm not sort of an expert on the history of this, that go, that, Th that sort of changed after Edwards, the, or that changed after uh, the 60s, I think, and it became sort of creation science. They tried to make it more scientific. That didn't work in Edwards. That was still thrown out by the courts. And so now it's sort of, then that was sort of, now it's evolved. There was like this old earth where you believe that everything was created in its present form, but the earth is millions of years old. There, and so evolution didn't happen, but the age of the earth is okay, because that was a big, uh, that was sort of a big uh, dog whistle in court where you said, the Earth is only 6,000 years old. They said, well, that's not true. Unconstitutional, you can't teach that. So now they said, okay, we can't teach the, the Earth is 6,000 years old. We'll teach the Earth is old, but still no evolution. Now that's gone. Then the, there's intelligent design, which is we're going to rename it and say, we're not going to name the designers, so maybe we'll be able to dodge the separation of church and state thing. Mm -hmm. um, that still didn't work because they were, it's been obviously designed as essentially the same thing as creationism by the same people who use the exact same wording. And we're even so careless, like the big example is the textbook. They're even so careless just to control F, delete creation, put design. And so it was declared unconstitutional too. So the next thing now is uh, sort of stealth creationism is what it's called now, which is we can't blatantly put this anywhere at all. We don't have a new name. We don't have anything that's going to stand up in court. So instead we'll open loopholes to bring it to the classroom when teachers and school boards are willing. Instead, and we, won't, we aren't able to force it anymore. And they also like disclaimers too, if some of y'all know. They like to put disclaimers in biology textbooks that say evolution is only a theory, which is a sort of, it's demeaning theory because they don't understand what it is. Um, the example I always give is um, the theory that Carl Weiss, who was uh, Huey Long's murderer, 
Um, there's, a, there's theories that he wasn't murdered. That's theory in common use. Like, but it's an unproven conjecture or hypothesis for science. But uh, in reality, a theory is very different. It's a well-tested, well-supported thing, body of evidence in science. Now, they like to put those in there too because they don't understand what theory is and it undermines the textbooks for people who don't have a good understanding of the scientific method and have been told that evolution is wrong. Has there ever been any civil disobedience by university students or something like that to protest this stuff? I, not that I'm aware of. I mean, there's the, the biggest of the universities have done on this, I know, is um, Stearns versus uh, Association of Christian Schools International, where they, uh, where they got the ability to like um, say, we don't like the textbooks you're using. These don't actually teach biology. These, these, we don't accept these as, as, an actual, as a valid uh, high school biology course, and they also have done that. They did it in that same case. We got the ability to say we don't like the history books that you use either, and some like the English books, and various other things. Can high school students do civil disobedience? Um, I mean, they shouldn't even need to do civil disobedience with creationism because it's unconstitutional. If high school students are being taught instead of protest, instead of protesting the sort of civil disobedience way, they should just go to court and take it because they'll win. Yeah, but if, if, if they do, like, let's say a sit out, okay, where you all sit outside the school and say, no, not going in, you know. It, it doesn't work. We had, we had walkouts. Um, KDISD had some walkouts after um, some school board issues uh, with elections and whatnot. Um, and basically, any student who participates in a walkout or a sit out or anything like that, if they're on campus but not going to class, they can be. Charged with all sorts of stuff, and if um, and if they just are sitting out of class, then it goes on truancy records and things like that. Because they, they're, minors. they're minors. Any any even if they're 18, any student who is receiving a free education from the state is perceived as a minor and thus has no rights whatsoever. It also makes more sense to sue because <laughs> yeah. they have the they have the conflict. They they are supposed to be called creationism, so instead of protesting, just take it to the courts because the courts will say you can't teach creationism. Um, a couple questions. Have the Supreme Court ruled in the 70s that um, you couldn't really, you're not supposed to use public funds for private schools? Is that Lemon, maybe? Yeah, the, the Lemon case. And then also, um, didn't they say that one of the tests I think that they came up with was um, it, you're not supposed to teach using anything that's not an official school? you know, um, school books or it, it, it's supplemental materials. I'm just wondering how they get around those two things. I'm battling the test, which is I, I should remember better. I, I remember like the no religious, the, I know there's a test. I, all I know is on the LSEA, they went and took the Supreme Court rulings and sort of wrote it specifically around that. And so it's more like critique. And like it just, it's to critique it, they are allowed alternative materials that are implemented by the state board. And so they control the state board's adoptions. Okay. Or control the state board board's implementation on adoption, then they control what's allowed. And they just and so what they did is instead of putting any specific, anything specific, they just didn't put any guards around it. Which so the way I just, or the way it was explained is sort of they opened the door and the dog ran out, and they're just saying we didn't mean for the dog to run out, um, <laughs> right? And that, that's sort of the way they're doing it. Zach, it sounds to me like you've expanded your platform to cover the voucher issue now, yeah. which understandably so. It seems to me, just looking at it, that it's blatantly unconstitutional to take public funds and then channel those funds to an organization that teaches, you know, all kind of crazy stuff. Is there any legal precedent behind it? There's, there's actually um, Zelman. I, I think it's Zelman versus Ohio. I, I should know the case. Which actually, scarily, it was a split decision that allows, um, well, allows these vouchers because what they're saying is you give the money to the parents who give them to schools, but not oh. the schools. And so the yeah, thing is. But the key thing is, well, there's there's a very strict test in Zelman that Louisiana, I mean, the case hasn't gone to court yet. It will go to court in October, and so it hasn't decided yet. But Louisiana is looking like it violates a lot of these test rules. For example, um, the creationism issue actually is not going to be the big issue in court. The creationism, I'll go, I'll go back to that in a few seconds, but the issues in court, for example, one are discrimination. Um, the voucher schools in Louisiana often require, like there's some voucher schools that require you to first, they bar specific sexual orientations and they bar people who aren't their specific version of Christianity. And so that violates the higher ruling. There's also, um, there, there's also some specifics on like the balance of secular and um, 
religious schools in the program, and Louisiana doesn't have a very even balance at all. So that's been, that would likely, I mean, that would likely get them in trouble when it comes to the court case. Um, I, I, as I've said, I'm not a legal expert, but that's what it's looking like um, when it comes to court. Um, on the on the creations part for the voucher, so the big issue we have on that is they actually they the state board of education approved accountability that our superintendent drafted, and so the accountability standards say curriculum must be equal to that of public schools. Now, the curriculum in these schools is clearly not equal to that of public schools, and so we keep telling them that, and they keep stonewalling, but it's not worked out for them well in the press, at least, because the press can look at the curriculum, or the standards and say, it says this, y'all are doing this, this is just absurd. Why did a bunch of units start school? I mean, could we go and... If you need, yeah, you could, def you could definitely start the school. Like, <laughs> you have, I mean, there's strict standards on, or there, there used to be, for charter schools at least, I don't, I, I don't know the super standards, but y'all can probably start a school pretty easily. Um, like, I mean, a lot of these schools got in trouble, not just for the creations, because like, we didn't even need fire code, or like, all the basic safety regulations. We approved a voucher school that <coughs> housing students in their school gym in the chapel. Like, and it's just like, when you have classroom, when you put your classroom in the school gym, like that, that's a really low level. So no wonder they're even addressing the curriculum, like we're not addressing the curriculum problems yet because we haven't even gotten rid of like basic safety problems. Why are your history majors instead of poli sci or pre law? Um, <laughs> I mean, Bryce doesn't have pre law, um, okay. at least not at this point. Um, poli sci is just. I, I, I like doing politics rather than studying politics. Okay. So, <laughs> so, that's so that's sort of my side. Um, and history, I just history is sort of the most natural field for me. How do your parents feel about you? They like it. Good. Good. <laughs> uh, I really appreciate what you're doing because I think the, the kind of law that uh, kind of law that's passing these days is insidious and it's ideologically driven. Let me ask though a more technical question and see if you know the answer to this. Uh, I think Louisiana has adopted what are called the Common Core Standards of the United States, right? They therefore are developing a testing system based on those. Yes. Those are not about creationism. So will kids not have to answer questions knowing evolution and tradition? They have to and know it. They, they do have to know it. So that's a bit of a safeguard against total brainwashing, right? Yeah, but I mean, but the thing is, like, if you teach them at, like, the first thing is, you may be able to fail a section of the test and pass the test. That's right. one thing. And the second is, you may just fail the test, and we still don't want that. Like, that's because you can tell kids, yeah. learn this and answer this way, but don't well, believe yeah. it. <laughs> I, I, I have a little story of my niece who was talking to her friends about studying history. This is in Tennessee, of all places and uh, not doing well in her history class. And she said, but that's OK. You, you don't need to know history. You just need to know Christ. Um, and so <laughs> this, this, is, this, this is what I'm afraid uh, the kind of parental control with the church will, will create. So uh, uh, thank you for what you're doing. There are some safeguards. But the other thing is on that thing, that, off the safe, that what you just pointed out gets cited off of the vouchers, which is they require testing. But most of the schools actually get under a minimum number of students that don't actually require testing. Um, and even if even if all the schools fail the voucher program, if every if all the voucher kids fail their science test and they all fail their grade, the voucher school still is allowed to keep them. Mm -hmm. They still get the money for the students. They still get to be part of the voucher program. They aren't allowed new students until their scores go up. So at least there's that. But it like it doesn't. There's no real consequences. And plus, the standards are different for a failing public school and a failing voucher school. Mm -hmm. And so, a failing, it's honest, I think the scale is on 150. I mean, the numbers are very hard because our state administration has been hiding all the numbers from us. And so, no one has a really accurate idea of what's going on. But the last numbers that I was able to see it looked like, and like, I'm not sure, they said they claimed it's different. No one really knows how. The last number said you, can, you have to have a 50 out of 150 if you're a voucher school. You have to have a 75 if you're a public school, mm -hmm. and so that that sort of that sort of gets rid of the safe parts. And that, I know that's not about, that's about just not public schools and public schools. It's a little safer with the standards for testing.
leaving then, you can still probably fail a section. Like, you can fail your biology section and pass your history and English and math and suddenly pass the test. That's and okay. On the, just because I know the testing that we do here in the state, uh, the evolution that's taught and that is tested on standardized state mm -hmm. testing is all mechanism and no mm -hmm. history. So it's like you can, yeah. there are teachers who try and marry the ideas of a young earth and evolution happening within a much, much smaller time frame and just going into the genetic yeah. basis of it rather than. The other thing is, I'm going to say standardized tests, standardized test, like as a public student, yeah. public student <laughs> aren't always the most accurate indicators of <laughs> exactly. real like, learning or not. Like, I mean, they're, they're, like, there's something like said, if we could actually get a like, great standardized test, that'd be useful, but not all of them are great. So, have you ever envisioned this going to the Supreme Court? Um, what's, which specifically? The voucher? The whole mess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not, not as one specific case, but I could, I could definitely see some cases going to the Supreme Court. I mean, the, it, I, it, would, it would take the right circumstances for everything, but it, there's certainly potential for it, too. Uh, something uh, creationism and evolutionary evolutionism uh, being rather than being set against each other allow both to be taught and let the student decide. Mm -hmm. no, no. No, that makes sense. Yeah. No, that's looking at But but that that means you have to teach all the creation stories of all the different religions and all the different cultures the around the world. Would it be a creation story? Yes. <laughs> Yeah. You got to teach the Buddhist the Hindu 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 the um, the article you actually posted the other day about Kentucky, where the senator who said that yeah. he doesn't want evolution taught in public schools because he only wants the scientific method to be taught yeah. in science class, and evolution never stood you know, up with the scientific method. So, can you just talk about that? It just that was really scary. They they I mean they love to misuse science to support like for the discovery we have talked about is very good at like. For example, they take new scientific research, quote line it, twist it, and use it to say, aha, evolution is wrong. And if you go look at the paper itself or ask the authors, yeah. do you mean any of this? They'll be like, they'll say absolutely not. But they're very good at twisting the science, scientific method, and just like misusing it or quote lining it to make it to for small political gains. And so it's a huge problem. It's I guess the only real way to solve it is sort of educate more people about how science works. And that I mean, I like that. That's that's really the only way to publish that because people can go publish whatever they want, and it's really easy to publish mis publish misinformation or say misinformation. Especially if you have a platform that's more like official, it's even more dangerous. Can you get any help from the European Union or other? Probably <laughs> <laughs> um, would be looked on kindly in America. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I imagine the, the response. Some of the responses to some of the stuff I've done this year in Louisiana has been, that's European style socialism. Now, that has actually been my governor's blank, his PR people's blank response to like any criticism, is it must be European style socialism. So I'd imagine they not, like, te teaching science is European style socialism. I mean, the more specific one is funding education for higher ed is European style socialism. Now, um, because colleges are socialism. So that, that, that's sort of the standard response. So I imagine they wouldn't like, um, the European Union involved. I imagine that wouldn't sit well in Louisiana politicians' minds. Maybe they could go into trade war and say, okay, we won't buy anything from the U.S. No, <laughs> 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 so, Zach, you were thrown into the public spotlight at such a young age. What were you, 16, 17? Um, 17, about. 17 or so. And in that time frame, you've spoken in front of groups, gone on national television, done all these things. What are your plan? Where do you see yourself in five years? Um, working on decisions still probably. <laughs> 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 it's, it's, it's something I, I really like doing this stuff. Um, it, I think it's an important issue. I mean, I feel like I'll be working more on climate change and science funding, just branching out from that because those are also important to me. As a lawyer, or what? Um, <laughs> sort of, sort of um, more taking. Right now, what I want to do, uh, I'm working on this with a friend, is trying to sort of 
I almost become a student arm of the NCAC, but get a nonprofit, get a 501c4 together, um, and sort of work on organizing students about this. Uh, with climate change, it, it has occurred to me the people who are fundamentalists and stuff, and they don't believe that sort of thing. The last few years, last year in Texas and now for the Midwest, I'm wondering if some of these people who are not evolutionists, do you think that the abrupt climate change in the United States in two years ago in Russia might have a bearing, may, may start them yes. so thinking on their own because of personal self-interest, not because of intellectual curiosity. No, I, I think now, now with the drought we've been having this year, I think that's actually gone a long way in like at least helping people realize there's climate change. Because, and because I mean, what you said is you can't ever uh, just take a specific event and use it as a trend. But still, people will look at that and say, it's really hot right now. <laughs> it's really hot, it's really dry. This feels a little bit weird, this isn't good. Maybe we should buy more of this. You can also see it sort of like, if you look at the industries who are opposed, opposing climate change, um, like or opposing talking about climate change, you'll notice that one of them's missing, which is the insurance industry. And they know climate change is happening, and they're, they're, they're worried worse. about it. Because, it, because, it, because as climate change happens, there's going to be more natural disaster. They're, they're, they're going to lose money from it. And so that, that's one group who has probably, what you said, self-interest, sort of embraced reality. On the internet, so you know it's true. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, I, I guess that in Kentucky, they had been teaching creationism for a while or had, had um, allowed it to enter their science curriculum. But they uh, had tested their uh, high school students and compared them to the national, uh, national results, and they failed. And of course they did because they didn't have the knowledge that they needed to make the scores that they needed to. And it was uh, based on standards that had been provided by scientific educators at the university level and higher. And, um, and the, the people in Kentucky were appalled. And the legislators were asking, well, could we, could we redo the test so that it doesn't care us? <laughs> yeah. and, and, but you It's not really, a, we can't really club our state with that even more because like, <laughs> we already are like at the very bottom of science testing. We're at the bottom of everything else too. <laughs> so the actually scary thing about that is they've used that to justify this voucher program, which is just gonna be, it's just gonna fail. It's like, these schools are, because like, I mean, not to be said, like, because schools, like there are problems with public schools. I'm the Louisiana public school student. Like, I love my school, it was a great school. There's still, like, there's still problems. But like, the way to fix it is not, these schools that are worse than the worse than the very worst public school. <laughs> okay. It seems to me that we are talking about a segment of society that belongs to an overarching theory that affects the political system, the economic system. Um, personal belief systems, and it's, it's a theory that the religious right beliefs really feed, and that is, uh, you are just a, a person who shouldn't think, and our, our authorities will do your thinking for you and tell you what to do, tell you how high to jump, when, they, when it's time to jump. Uh, Robert Jensen has written a book called All My Bones Shake. He's from United, University of Texas Journalism School. And he's written a really short book, 100 pages. But it talks about the ver various parts of society that all this <coughs> kind of thinking feeds. What it does is give authority to the very few and you know we're talking in this country about the top wealthiest people paying the lowest tax rates, not the, less, not the least money, but the lowest tax rates. 
It all feeds into that kind of thinking. This is part of it. It's, it's a segment of the big Okay. Zach, um, in Mississippi was there. Amongst my many experiences, I actually taught in the heart of Mississippi, right in the middle. And uh, your confrontation stuff works because when I, it, it came up, I was teaching biology amongst other subjects, and I was looking some flag, and I said, hey, um, you know, the Catholic Church uh, believes in evolution, so I was trying to ignite a religious one. So they kind of backed off on that one. Then the second one is, I said, I know where you get some of that stuff. I said, you get your preachers, come on down to my classroom, this is where science is taught. Nobody ever accepts the challenge, right? So your stuff works, you know, now and then. It's easier to remember the John Paul II one, which is there's no conflict in evolution, the doctrine of faith. And I mean, Louisiana is very Catholic, so that's, that, the Catholics, it's nice to have at least their support on this one. Yeah. Um, we have a bunch of more, our support of legislatures, um, very overwhelmingly more well, Catholic, so. They're, they're but how, how come the number of votes? I mean, it's like so we're, we're going to have to bring it to a close because we have seven minutes to get all the chairs put away. <laughs> so I'm sorry to cut you off, but I, I hope that 